Uh, good afternoon, classmates. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Dean Avante. I am Juana Salonsagay, and together with me, Ms. Camille Rose Santiago, and we will be presenting Chapter 4, which is about social ethical concerns relating to information system. So for this topic, our learning outcomes, number one, what political, social, and ethical challenges are brought up by information system? Number two, what specific conduct of rules can be utilized to direct moral choices? Number four, why do the internet and modern information system technology make it harder to safeguard people's privacy and intellectual property? And then number four, what effects do information systems have on daily life? So first point is understanding ethical and social issues related to system. So um pinaka key factor dito is about the ethics. So ethics are the principles of right and wrong individuals acting as free moral agents used to make choices to guide their behavior. So with ethics, so ito yung ating consideration, ito yung nagiging um ang guidelines natin when um, kung paano tayo uh, uh, mag, mag make ng decisions. So, ano ba yung right behavior? Ano ba yung tama at mali? So, with the information system, yung pagdating ng information system, it tries new ethical questions for both individuals and societies. So, because of information system, nag-create kasi siya ng mga opportunities na nagpo-brought ng intense social change. So, ethical, social, and political issues are closely linked. So, introduction of new technology has a rifle effect in the current equilibrium. So, with because of this new technology, so, nag-create siya ng new ethical, social, and political issues. So, which is kailangan siyang harapin ng isang individual, in a social, in a political levels. So, both social and political institutions are required um, require time before developing new behaviors, rules, and laws. So, before pa magkaroon ng technology, before pa ma-develop or ma-invento yung technology, meron na tayong existing rules, meron na tayong existing laws. Pero dun sa pagdating ng technology, um, na-interrupt na siya. Hindi naman sa na-interrupt, pero dahil bago, bago yung sistemang to, yung tatawag nating technological system, kailangan nating mag-create ng mga bagong rules, ng mga bagong laws para mag-govern doon sa uh, society. So in this figure, so please um, focus on the sa pinakagitna muna. So we have the information technology and system. So sa pagdating ng information technology system, nagkaroon ng mga issues. Hindi lang basta issue, ethical, social, and political issues. So sino yung naaapektuhan niya? Yung individual, yung society, yung ating civil or yung ating mga rules or yung kung anong nag-governing uh, rules na meron or nag exist At dahil dyan, yan, nagkaroon din ng mga tinatawag na uh, five main moral dimensions. So itong mga moral dimension, ito yung mga uh, sanhi ng ethical, social, and political issues. So, ano ba yung kinuk uh, pag sinabi natin moral dimension, ano ba yung ibig sabihin nun? Ito yung nagiging aims natin, yung reason natin to um, do something or to take action on something. So, dahil may issues na tayo at sino yung naaapektuhan niya, so, napoform itong five moral dimensions. So, kailangan mag mag makapag-set tayo ng information for our uh, rights and obligations, magkaroon ng property rights and obligation, yung magkaroon ng proper system, quality system, at mapakapag-produce tayo ng quality of uh, quality life or quality of life. And yun, magkaroon tayo ng responsibility, yung accountability and control uh, with the situation. So with the development of um uh, with the existing uh, with the development of um ethical social 
issues. So, saan ba nang galing yon So, san, sino ba yung, ano ba yung mga naging reason bakit naging nagkaroon ng, uh, ng, ng, ng ganitong mga klaseng issues? Kasi meron tayong tiyatawag na four main technology trends. So, ito yung nakatulong, kumbaga, dun sa mga karoon ng um, social arrangement o bagong social arrangement and laws. So, unang-una, number one, uh, computing power has doubled every 80, 18 months. So, allowing growing numbers of organization to use information system in their core business processes. So, this growing dependence on critical system increases vulnerability to system errors and poor data quality. So, technology trends. So, ito po yung... Um, pagde-develop pa yung pag advance pa nung tinatawag nating mga processor sa mga computer. So dahil mas nade-develop magiging sabi nga nila mas modern yung mga uh, ginagamit natin sa mga company, yung pagpa-process natin ng mga data or pagpa-process natin ng mga services. So ayan, nagiging mas in demand pa yung paggamit ng information system. So, number two naman, yung advances in data storage technique. So, have enabled for the multiplying database on individuals maintained by private and public organizations, making the violation of individual privacy both cheap and effective. So, dito, dahil dun sa paglawak no data storage technique. So, di ba may mga cloud-based tayo, may mga drive tayo na ginagamit. So, dahil ito mas accessible na, so, hindi natin sure kung Mm, meron na siyang issues pagdating dun sa privacy ng mga data ng isang individual or ng isang company. So, number three, advances in data analysis techniques. So, ito enables companies and government agencies use profiling to determine detailed information about individuals' habits and tastes and create dosers of detailed information. So, meron silang kinakamit na data analysis technology, yung tinatawag ng NORA. So, non-obvious relationship awareness. Kung saan, yung data ng isang individual, yun, nakokonek-konek nila yung mga information ng isang individual. At from that, nalalaman nila kung, ito, kung isang individual na to ay potential na criminal or terrorista. So, number four, advanced in networking Um, reduce the cost of moving and as, uh, assessing data, permitting privacy invasion on a vast scale. So, advance in networking. So, when it comes to networking, ito yung kung saan yung data, you can access anywhere. O kung ano man yung device na gamit mo. So, with that, yung parang conveniency ng pag-access ng data. So, nagiging ano din siya, nagiging issue siya pagdating doon sa social and ethical concerns. So, what are the ethics in technological society? So, meron tayong tinatawag na ethical analysis. So, yung pag evaluate natin doon sa isang um, issues. So, number one, we need to clearly identify and state the facts. And then number two, uh, specify the issue at hand and point out the higher order values at stake. Number three, list the party involved. Number four, list the choices you can make that are reasonable. And then number five, determine any possible repercussions of your choices. So with ethical analysis, kaya, uh, from the word analysis, so ini-evaluate natin yung scenario. Nag, um, with this uh, five-step procedure, uh, nagiging useful siya para ma-determine or ma-analyze natin yung sitwasyon at makahanap tayo ng uh, possible solution doon sa scenario or doon sa situation. And also nagiging guideline siya when it comes to decision making. So, uh, meron din tayong uh, pwedeng pagbasihan pagdating dun sa tinatawag na Candidates Code of Ethics. So, ginagamit din natin to sa pag-analyze ng situation. Number one, yung tinatawag na the golden rule. So, dito sa the golden rule, we treat others how you would like to be treated. So, dito iniisip natin na um, yung sarili o inilalagay natin yung sarili natin dun sa sitwasyon ng ibang tao. So from that, yun magka makakapag-reflect tayo paano kung sa akin nangyari yon. So with that, nakakaisip tayo ng possible choice or proper choice pagdating doon sa scenario. 
So next one is number two, according to Immanuel Kant's categorical imperative, wrong for any individual, individual it is wrong for everyone. So dito naman, kinoconsider natin na kapag mali na siya sa umpisa or mali na siya sa isang, sa isang individual, bakit pa kailangan pa siyang i-spread kung mali naman talaga siya? So parang from that na bablock na natin yung uh, ma contaminate or mag-spread yung something wrong. And then number three, according kay Descartes' principle of change, if an activity cannot be performed repeatedly, it should not be performed at all. So according sa kanya, is it when it comes to behavior. So if a behavior is continued, it may first result in a tiny alteration that is acceptable but eventually bring about an acceptable modification. So it might be said, once started down a slippery path, you may not be able to halt in everyday speech. So um, dito kailangan ng total control. So number four, yung follow the utilitarian principle and take the activity that results in a higher or larger value. So dito, kinoconsider kino natin ano yung mas practical. So tinitignan natin dito kung ano yung isang bagay na magkukos siya ng higher value. Number five, use the risk aversion principle and choose the course of action that possess the least risk of potential harm. So dito naman sa risk of aversion principle, so tinitignan natin yung loss and gain. So hanapan, hanapan natin o evaluate natin ano yung mawawala, ano yung magiging natin doon sa isang sitwasyon na yun. So from that, actually makakapag-focus tayo doon sa um, course of action na dapat natin igawin para maiwasan yung potential harm. Number six, so unless um, otherwise, stated, assume that almost all intangible or intangible items are the property of someone else. So, nag a na tayo na intangible man or intangible yung item. So, meron siyang value sa ibang pao. Okay? Binabalue siya ng ibang pao. Kung di man natin siya binabalue, binabalue siya ng ibang pao. So, these are the uh, code of ethics na pwede natin i-consider when it comes to evaluating or analyzing situation. So the next point is information rights, freedom and privacy in the age of uh, of the internet. So dito we highly recognize or um kumbaga give importance to yung sinatawag nating right to privacy. So right to privacy is the right of a person to be free from intrusion into or publicity concerning matters of a personal nature. So itong right to privacy hindi na daw to nangyayari sa totoong buhay or hindi na kumbaga um uh ibang manifest sa buhay ng isang tao especially pag sa workplace so sa workplace meron ng privacy concern pagdating doon sa mga high tech surveillance cameras or surveillance methods ng isang organization meron din dito ini-include yung mga electronic monitoring yung mga um kumbaga technology um attendance checking now with the use of the technology mga attendance checking so Individual privacy rights are at danger because information technology and networks make privacy invasion easy, affordable, and profitable. So, um, pinipresent nila na it's part of technology and development ng isang organization, pero yung information mo as individual naka nandoon sa kanila. Like, for example, um, yung time in, time out sa, sa mga offices gamit yung yung thumb mark mo. So, naka-register na agad dun yung, yung ano mo, yung thumb mark mo. So, identity mo din yun. So, naka, nasa, kan nasa kanila na yung information na yun. So, there are many challenges wag dating dun sa privacy o oh, privacy on the internet. So, especially website. So, website keep track of a person's online activity including their searches the websites and pages they visit, the online material they access, and the products the, they browse or buy. So, uh, nare-record yung lahat ng sinesearch natin sa mga websites. Kahit nga sa mga social media account eh. So, uh, nare-record yung mga pinupuntaan natin, kung ano yung pinapanood natin, kung ano yung sinesearch natin, naka-record lahat. And usually, ginagamit din nila yung data na yun 
para mag-recommend ng mga same content para you keep um, engaged doon sa internet. So which is, yun yung um, nagiging challenges yun kasi uh, nagiging issue siya kasi yung mga yung sa pagbabrowse mo pa lang or sa mga tinitignan mo nagiging ano siya nagiging kinukuha siya as um data nung nung website so i have here short video regarding privacy on internet i heard a saying that if you're not paying for the product then you are the product absolutely it's absolutely true that's alan henry from lifehacker.com so first off, Alan, why should we care about internet privacy? Every time you uh, click from one website to another, you click on a link to go to the next page, that's information that people are collecting about. That kind of information that you may think is meaningless is the steam that powers a lot of companies. Oh, so if I don't want my personal info to be used by other people to make tons of money, what can I do? The first step is really for people to understand the transaction that they make when they get something shiny and new that's free. So when you sign up for a new account at whatever service, read the terms of service at least as much as you can. What is it that you're giving up? Could you give me an example? Like, what if I sign up for a photo sharing site? Well, congratulations. Those photos are now owned by that company. They could be used in advertising efforts, even if those are photos of you and your family. Oh, ouch. Okay, so what can I do about this? If you are okay with Facebook and Twitter and, and Google and these other companies knowing these things about you, then uh, that's fine. If you're not okay, or if you want to uh, control when they get information and when they don't, uh, there are a number of browser extensions like Disconnect and Ghostery. All of these browser extensions give you control over whether or not uh, the sites that you visit collect information about you and send them to other related companies. Okay, then. My information is important, and I'm going to protect it as best I can. So next one is what are the property uh, property rights or the intellectual property? So we need to um know so kung ano yung ating mga um rights pagdating dun sa pag safe keep ng ating mga personal data. So first is we need to know uh, yung pagpapatents ng mga um original na um uh, gawa natin or identity natin or information, paglalagay ng copyright. So, ito yung uh, legal privilege to guard intellectual property creators. So, uh, para hindi siya ma-duplicate or ma-copy. So, commerce or trade secret. So, ito yung pagsiset natin na isang ng, ng information na um, nagiging secret siya or uh, hindi siya dapat agad-agad i-share or may legalities na hindi mo to basta-basta mapapublicize yung information na yon and then yung pag uh, alam natin ng mga legal protections so to know more uh, let's watch this um, next video intellectual property or ip refers to something a person has either thought of or created some examples of ip include designs processes, songs, logos, discoveries, symbols, and even brand new varieties of plants. IP belongs to the person who thought it up or put the work into creating it. They get to decide who makes it, how and where it's used, and who can sell and profit from it. But how can thinkers and creators keep their IP safe from misuse by others? After all, in a digital world, it's easy to copy an idea or a design. Luckily, there are laws in place to protect IP once a person is ready to go public with it, there are four major paths to legal protection. Applying for a patent. Patents cover things like inventions, new processes, new machines, and new ways of manufacturing things. Applying for a copyright. Copyrights protect works like art, music, writings, movies, and even software. Using a trademark to cover unique branding and identifiers like business names, logos, slogans, mascots, and more. Keeping something secret. Trade secrets make sure that things like manufacturing processes, formulas, and compilations of information never make it into the wrong hands. Getting these protections in place may seem difficult or time-consuming at first, but protecting yourself is well worth the time and effort, and it's not as hard as you may think. 
This is where technology transfer, or T2, comes in. T2 helps negotiate the use, sharing, and assigning of IP so that companies and individuals can use government technology or a joint project between the government and private sector can take place. T2 can make it easy to license a patent or share confidential information so both parties can help each other solve problems or create new products. So for the uh, next part of the discussion, Miss um, Camille Rose Santiago will continue. Thank you for listening.